Had things gone differently, the U.S. Navy's top Cold War fighter jet could have been the F-8 Crusader instead of the F-4 Phantom. But not the legendary Crusader that bested Meiji's over North Vietnam. Instead, it would have been the XF-8U3, dubbed the Crusader 3 or the Super Crusader, a bigger, badder version of the F-8U Crusader that the Navy flew in the 1950s and early 1960s. The Crusader 3 was developed by manufacturer Chance Vaught at the same time as it developed the Crusader 1 and 2 models used by the Navy. Despite similar names, the Crusader 3 was a larger aircraft that actually didn't share many parts with its siblings. The Super Crusader made its debut flight in June 1958. The overall performance of the Dash 3 was outstanding, says aviation writer Steve Pace in his history of the Crusader. Officially the Dash 3 had a recorded top speed of Mach 2.39. Unofficially Mach 2.6 was predicted. Some proponents felt Mach 3 was not out of the question. The Super Crusader was capable of continued Mach 2.2 speed at 68,000 feet. It demonstrated 6G capability and continued 51 halves G turns at Mach 2.2. At the time, the Minus 3 was the only single-engine fighter in the world capable of near Mach 2.4 speed. The Super Crusader differed from the Crusader 1 and 2 in a variety of areas. It had a more powerful JT-4 turbojet engine instead of a JT-3, which helped give the Crusader 3 a higher speed, climb rate and maximum ceiling. It also featured all-weather capability, longer range, more advanced flight controls, better maneuverability and two retractable ventral stabilizing fins. Chance Vought even proposed mounting a rocket motor in the Super Crusader's tail for extra boost. Ironically, Phantoms were found efficient in Vietnam because they weren't armed with an internal cannon to supplement the unreliable early generation air-to-air -air missiles. The Crusader 1 and 2 won plaudits because they did carry cannon, but not the Crusader 3. Like the F-4, the Super Crusader was proposed as a cannonless fighter armed only with seven air-to-air -air missiles, four sidewinder heat seekers and three Sparrow radar guided weapons. Still, all missile armament was the fighter fad in the years leading up to the Vietnam War, so the choice was understandable, if mistaken. In mock dogfights, the Crusader 3 regularly defeated early model Phantoms. Pace cites a Navy aviation expert who said, the F-8U3 went farther, faster, it turned better, cost less, weighed less, and it would go as far on internal fuel as the F-4H1 could go with a 600-gallon external fuel tank. The airplane was, I guess, 25% cheaper than the F-4H. As I said, the F-8U3 was the best airplane we ever cancelled. Yet the Navy ultimately chose the F-4 Phantom as its carrier-based fighter. Why? It couldn't have been looks, the Super Crusader was a far sleeker aircraft than the Pungy Phantom. Perhaps it was economics as the Department of Defense in the early 1960s pushed for a common fighter for the Air Force, Navy, and Marines. Safety might have had something to do with it. 2. The Crusader 1 and 2 were known for high accident rates. Or was it because the Super Crusader was a hotshot dinosaur, a superb throwback to an earlier era of stick and rudder dog fights? For example, Sparrow missiles required painting the target with a radar beam. A Phantom pilot could leave this to his backseat weapons officer while he flew the plane. The pilot of a single-seat Super Crusader would have had to fly the plane and control the Sparrow. The Phantom was also more versatile, serving as a bomber, wild weasel air defense killer and reconnaissance aircraft. In fact, the F-4 was so remarkably adaptable and tough that the last US military Phantom wasn't retired until December 2016. For all the speed and maneuverability of the Super Crusader, it is doubtful whether it could have remained relevant for 58 years. Somehow it seems appropriate that the Super Crusader prototypes ended their days pushing the frontier of flight for NASA. Since the new Crusaders could fly above 95% of the Earth's atmosphere, they were naturally useful for space research, writes Barrett Dillman in his book MIG Master, The Story of the F-8 Crusader. They were also engaged in sonic boom intensity studies, but more sporting diversions were occasionally found, Tillman writes. The story is told that NASA pilots flying out of Langley, Virginia, gleefully bounced Phantoms undergoing evaluation at Patuxent River. The Navy test pilots reportedly complained, and the sport ceased. But it had made Vought partisans feel a little better.